Andrew Fazekas, the night sky guy, here for you again, talking about what's in the night sky wherever you are. It's May 22nd, 2023. It's great for you to join me. Please share where you're watching from. I love to see it. Just put it in the comments. I'm always watching where everyone is located. Um, it's another great week here in my neck of the woods in Montreal, Canada, on the east coast of North America. It's been clear skies the last few nights, fantastic sky watching, and some really th cool things that you can see with the naked eye easily. So we'll just stop by and uh, on the planetarium program and watch all of that. Uh, and if you like please, this video and it comes every week, every Monday, uh, the night sky this week, please show your support by giving me a thumbs up, a like, and make sure you subscribe to my channel, whether you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch, or Twitter, it really makes a difference and allows me to make these videos every week. So it does make a big difference, so please do show your support by subscribing. And that way you won't miss out on all the neat things that come, even not just the live stream, but also sky charts that come every week as well. So. Without further ado, let's uh, step into the planetarium. And we've got the night sky set up here for May 22nd, Monday, as I am uh, currently. If you're watching in the future, that's okay. You'll see some cool stuff coming up in the, in the uh, coming few minutes. But what we've got here uh, really is the main event i would think for this week in terms of observing especially naked eye observing wherever you are around the world this is going to be visible looking towards the west after sunset i would say maybe about a half hour 45 minutes after sunset you get to begin to see worlds that become visible a clustering of worlds this is one of my favorite things are conjunctions and that's what you're going to be seeing here is a set of conjunctions. So what you have here uh, is you can see there is a crescent moon right there, a real whisker thin crescent moon. And just above that will be a bright star-like object, the brightest star-like object in th this part of the sky. And that is actually a planet, planet Venus, a neighboring world to ours. And then if in a kind of in a diagonal line, in a line, if you just draw a line through these two worlds, the moon and Venus, and you can keep going, you'll hit another bright star, not <laughs> by no means as bright as Venus, but still nevertheless, something that's visible to the naked eye. And that is actually Mars. The planet Mars is orange in color and uh, very distinctly orange in color. And it's really neat because if you think about Mars, right, that orange color, here's a beautiful kind of photograph of, of Mars taken by a spacecraft orbiting the planet. You see that distinctive orange color? That's caused by iron oxide, sort of the same chemistry as what happens here with rust on iron. And so all that iron oxide is rusting in the dust and sands of Mars, and it's covering the entire planet all that orange dust, and we can actually see that with our own eyes. It's really incredible, and it's far away. I mean, this is 288 million kilometers away. Just think about that, folks. 288 million kilometers away is the distance of Mars from Earth. That means it takes about 16 minutes for the light one way for, between our worlds to travel. So that sunlight, the same sun that you see outside here on a planet is shining on Mars. We can see that color that bounces off of that color and we can see that distinctive orange color traveling for 288 million kilometers. And that comes out like about, takes 16 minutes for the light to travel to reach our, that's way up here you can see that. Isn't that incredible? I mean, it's just so neat. And then of course you've got Venus which we, we, I was saying is just this beautiful, bright, bright, bright uh, planet. Uh, it's, it, and, and you can see the distance here is much closer. It's 121 million kilometers away. And so the light takes 6.7 minutes, just shy of seven minutes to reach your eye. And Venus is, is, is a bigger planet, 
okay, than Mars. Uh, Mars is about a one third the size of the Earth, while Venus is almost exactly the same size as planet Earth. And it's enshrouded with very bright colored clouds. You can see here from this image here, again, taken, this one is taken by Mariner 10 spacecraft a long time ago, decades ago by NASA. You can see the coloration. You see how bright and reflective those clouds are All right. on Venus? Of course, that's why it's so bright in our skies. It's, it's, it's close. It's one of the closest of two planets, Mars and Venus. They vie for the being the closest planet to Earth. And depending on when we're watching, what time of the year. And so it's bright. It's just inherently, intrinsically bright because of that. And it's just going to be beautiful. So this is Monday night that I've got this set up, folks. So you've got the moon, Venus, and Mars. Uh, and also, also as an added attraction, look, you've got the two bright stars that represent the twins of Gemini. So this is the Gemini constellation. So all this action that with Venus and the moon are happening within the Gemini constellation. And you can tell that by, if you look above the, the set of Venus and the moon, you'll see close by two other bright stars, very close to each other. And that is uh, the two twin stars of, of Gemini, Pollux and Castor. So, if we look at Pollux, Pollux is 33.8 light years away. That's that yellow star. And then the white star, this one, is uh, just shy of 51 light years. It's 50.9 light years away. And so you can see the contrast too in the color of these two stars. Again, this is all visible even if you're stuck within the city. As long as you've got a clear view towards the western horizon, the western part of the sky. Try to find a spot where the west is clear of buildings or trees or hills or whatever you have. Just a clear view towards the west tonight and the, end the rest of this week. The sky show gets even better on Tuesday. Check this out. So we've got this on Monday right now, but let's go to Tuesday. And I think Tuesday is going to be the most spectacular. So Tuesday, May 23rd, you've got, again, Venus and Mars in the same place. But as you can see, the moon from Monday being down here, watch what happens. It actually goes, flips onto the other side of Venus and is wedged in between Mars and Venus, actually, the moon is. And what's really neat is that the moon is going to be very close to uh, the two stars, Castor and Pollux as well. Look at that. See, I'm just zooming in a little bit so you can see right there's Pollux and Castor and the moon and then Mars out here. Now, for those of you that may have been noticing this, the trio of Mars, Pollux, and Castor, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but last week, looking towards the west, I actually posted on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, I posted a, a photo that I took with my smartphone of these three objects, these three star-like objects, Mars, Pollux, and Castor. They were in a beautiful lineup. Now what you're seeing is Mars is kind of moving away from that Gemini pair of stars. It's really cool. You can actually see that's the movement of the Earth and the movement of Mars. The combination of the two planets moving in their respective orbits are making it appear for us from our vantage point here, looking up at the sky as sky watchers, we see Mars pulling away from the Gemini twin stars, Castor and Pollux. That's what you're seeing here. You can see there's Mars. And I could just show this to you on this uh, uh, planetarium program, Sky Safari here, uh, that I'm gonna go back in time. So this is now Tuesday, May 23rd. But if I go to Monday, today's Monday, go back to yesterday, uh, Sunday, Saturday, Friday, last week. This is last week, Friday, right? Thursday, do you notice? You see Mars is, is closer. And if I just keep going, let me just pull down this thing here, and you can see by May 11th, almost a week and a half ago, look where Mars was. You see that? So much closer. And since then, you can see Mars has pulled away. Look how Mars has pulled away from the pair, right? So uh, by Tuesday, tomorrow, from this broadcast, on Tuesday, May 23rd, this is what you're going to see in the West absolutely spectacular sight. Don't want to miss this. Uh, I can see folks 
uh, putting in, in the comments. There, I've got folks from Riven from Zambia is there. Uh, Gesina is in Cape Town, South Africa. Fatima in Portugal. Uh, I've got Nancy in the Netherlands. JJ in Pennsylvania. Oh my gosh, this is great. And I've got Darlene in Michigan as well. This is fantastic, guys. Keep it coming. I love seeing where you're watching from. Um, so we're talking about this beautiful clustering of worlds and stars in the West after sunset. Now, the later you wait, the, uh, um, the better the sky show after sunset, I would think. There's this beautiful window of opportunity, really. You can see I'm going to just widen the view here a little bit. Let me just get this like this. And you can see Mars is up here, Venus, the moon. And there's uh, Pollux and, of course, Castor is there as well. Uh, just beautiful uh, sight. And if you wait uh, an hour after sunset, you can see, see that? See how it, it actually pops out. So if you're having problems finding maybe the Gemini twins or Mars, it's not quite popping out for you. Maybe your vision isn't as it used to be, uh, you know, a while ago. Wait till it gets darker. And you'll still have like maybe an hour or two before all of these beauties set, these cosmic beauties set in the Western horizon. And you can see it. It's really easy to do. No problem whatsoever. So check that out. I mean, it's a, just a beautiful, beautiful sight. And okay, so this is, this is Tuesday. Now let's move to Wednesday. And you'll see the moon just is a wonderful guidepost in, in showing us things in the sky. So and by the way, you can see that the crescent moon is getting fatter, a thicker crescent moon. It's what we call a waxing crescent moon. Uh, very, very beautiful. So this is Tuesday. Look by Wednesday. Now, Wednesday night, look where the moon is next to Mars. So you get this fantastic pairing, very eye-catching, of seeing that orange-colored star, that distinctly orange-colored star right there next to the crescent moon. And we're in the constellation Cancer the Crab, another zodiacal constellation. If you've never seen it, maybe it's the constellation uh, that zodiacal sign that you were born under this and wondered where is the real constellation this is right where it is it's right next to Gemini and we can see it in the sky in the west after sunset is the cancer the crab and it's hosting the crescent moon with beautiful red Mars just a great sight again this is Wednesday so here's something really cool guys this beautiful sight I would like you to try to take photographs with it with your smartphone. Try to do that. Should be fairly easy and beautiful and kind of get it framed with maybe the horizon, some trees, buildings, maybe a statue. Maybe you can put a, a family or friend person in the, in the picture as well and frame that picture and post it on social, on your social channel and use the hashtag hashtag beauty without borders or BWB and folks at Astronomers Without Borders, which I am part of uh, that non international nonprofit that uses astronomy for good. They believe in one people, one sky, and they are running this amazing photo campaign called Beauty Without Borders. And it really represents this particular uh, conjunction, this, this event of clustering of worlds represents something that everyone can see. Wherever you are around the world, it's something that we can all enjoy. And to show that we can all see it, post it on social. Share it by using the hashtag Beauty Without Borders or hashtag BWB. And let's see what everyone is seeing in their local skies. I'll definitely be sharing your posts, your photos too. So I'd love to see that. So to, tonight, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday are going to be the perfect time to see this clustering with the moon. So do try that. So that's what we've got for Wednesday with the moon next to Mars. Now, let's see where the moon is heading. We're going to see uh, by going on, this is Wednesday the 24th, but why don't we go to Thursday the 25th? And we can see here on by Thursday the 25th, the moon has passed Mars. And now the moon is, is going towards the constellation Leo the Lion, a very traditional 
uh, springtime constellation for those of us in the northern hemisphere. So this is a really great site, but it gets better. Watch on by Friday, May 26. By May 26, the moon is going to be pairing up with the bright star that is the lead bright star in the constellation Leo. And it's called Regulus. The star is 78 light years away, practically a human lifetime it takes for the light from Regulus to reach us here on Earth. And the crescent moon, which is now practically a quarter moon actually here. Let's take a look at here at the stats here. Um, yeah, it's first quarter moon already. It's a seven day old moon. This is again by Friday, May 26th. So mark that down on your calendar. Maybe you get clouded out on some of these days and that's okay. Because take a look at this. You can see some amazing things throughout the week. So this is by Friday. And look at the lineup. There's Mars still, and there's Venus. Just a beautiful lineup in the uh, south, southwestern skies after sunset. So mark that down by May 26. The moon is there. And by, uh, by uh, May 27th, Saturday, it's on the hind quarters of of, of Leo the lion, just a fantastic sight, just beautiful. So folks, there you have it. I'm gonna be posting sky charts all week long about these, so don't fret, I'll have them up uh, so you'll get to see it. So if you like this video, guys, consider subscribing. It really means a lot to me and bringing this show to you every Monday, uh, live streaming it, whether you're watching on Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, uh, give it a thumbs up, perhaps share it with your network of friends. Let's get more people to do sky watching. It's super easy to do. You don't need a telescope or binoculars and it's something that you can see with the naked eye. And it kind of makes you ponder, doesn't it? It makes you think, makes you feel humble. And there's that awe and wonder that is all about night sky and kind of brings everybody together, I feel, uh, by being able to share what we see in the night sky. And if you're interested in that kind of stuff, uh, I've got a book for you, that's for sure, Backyard Guide to the Night Sky. It's a best-selling book that I produced with National Geographic. I jam-packed it with all my favorite tips and tricks. You can check it out in any fine bookstore. I am also selling signed, dedicated copies. So perhaps you have a, as a gift idea for someone, a birthday gift or something like that, I will dedicate it personally, sign it, and send it to you. So I have those for sale on my website, thenightskyguide.com, as I do my uh, Atlas, which is a six and a half pound book. This is not for taking on trips, but kind of touring the night sky and learning about humanity's connection to the night sky and all about the Northern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere, all 88 constellations, the mythology, uh, all kinds of things that are uh, up in the sky. It's all included in that book, including astrotourism, tourism, astroarchaeology, all kinds of wonderful things. I'm also selling signed dedicated copies of that. Makes a great gift, perhaps. Consider that. I'll put a link in the comments so you can check the books out yourself. Uh, with that, thank you so much for spending a few moments of your time with me. I love bringing this every week. It's my passion. I love sharing it with you. I want to thank you for spending a few moments of your time with me. It really does mean a lot. I love seeing the comments. I love seeing the questions. And uh, I look at each and every one of them. Thank you so much. I hope to see you next week. Until then, I wish all of you clear skies. Bye-bye.